Did you know about the plans by NHS Digital to make 10 years of your NHS data available to third parties? My guess is you probably didn't, and that's what I'm talking about today. But first of all, if you're new to me and you've got questions of your own, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. So your NHS data, many of you will have no idea what I'm talking about, so allow me to explain. NHS Digital is the organisation responsible for collecting health and care data across England, and it's done so for some 10 years now under what they called the General Practice Extraction Service. These days I'm sure we all understand the importance of privacy and data protection. Virtually every website I visit these days has got a pop-up box asking me whether I consent to the way that my information is being used, collected by its tracking cookies. And in my view, the subject I'm talking about today is no different. So allow me to explain what all the fuss is about. From the 1st of July 2021, there is a new scheme being rolled out by NHS Digital called the General Practice Data for planning and research data collection. And on its own website, NHS Digital tells you what data it's going to collect, which includes diagnoses, symptoms, observations, test results, medications, allergies, immunizations, referrals, recalls, appointments, including information about physical, mental, and sexual health, data on sex, ethnicity, sexual orientation, and about which staff have treated you. Now, whilst NHS Digital says it will not be collecting names and addresses, it does say that it will be collecting NHS numbers, full postcodes, and dates of birth. Although these such details are apparently going to be replaced by a unique code in a process they call pseudonymization, which is supposed to protect the identity of the individual in question, whilst at the same time allowing to decode the information to identify those patients in given circumstances. Now, as a barrister with a fairly technical background, I can tell you that this is a grave concern to me, because where there is a code and a cipher, there is always the very real risk that this data can be in the wrong hands, reverse engineered, decoded, and information and identities exposed. So what is it about this new scheme that has got so many people so concerned? Well, that appears to be threefold. Firstly, inadequate or lack of communication about the scheme to the general public, a concern shared by the Royal College of GPs. The second point, and I personally think this is of paramount importance, is that this is an opt-out scheme rather than an opt-in. In other words, your data is going to be included unless you opt out. Whereas, for example, if you're doing something as simple as visit a website, it asks you whether you want to opt in or opt out to the tracking cookies that the website uses. Your NHS data, on the other hand, is an opt out, which means you will need to opt out if you don't want your data to be included in the scheme. I'll talk more about the opt out in a moment. Thirdly, and I think this is a point that's going to upset quite a lot of people, is the general feeling that your data is going to be sold to third parties. First of all, I must make it very clear that NHS Digital has responded to these concerns on their website, and they say the following. NHS Digital does not sell data. It does, however, charge for those who want to access this data for the costs of making the data available to them. And it goes on to say that NHS Digital will not approve requests for data that's going to be used for insurance or marketing purposes, promoting or selling products or services, market research, or advertising. So strictly speaking, third parties are not buying your data, they are paying for access to your data. NHS Digital also says that any request for access to this information will go through a robust assessment and must have a legal basis. But I think it's important that you understand which third parties might be making such a request for access to your data. They include the following. As you might expect, the Department of Health and Social Care and various agencies. NHS England and NHS Improvement wouldn't be any surprise. Primary care networks and local authorities also no surprise. But many of you may be concerned that research organisations, including universities, charities, clinical research organisations that run clinical trials and pharmaceutical companies. Now, as a barrister, I always try to look at arguments on both sides, and there are arguments in favour of sharing this data. So to summarise that argument very briefly, research organisations such as universities, pharmaceutical companies, need access to a broad enough spectrum of data to be able to develop new medicines, understand diseases, and so on. But like many things, I think there's a very careful balance between the needs and the development of society versus an individual's rights and freedoms. And ultimately, whilst my personal views have no bearing on professional advice, I do think it's absolutely crucial to protect each individual's freedom of choice. 
And by having this system as an opt-out, it is not giving you, the individual, the opportunity to make a free and informed decision as to whether or not you want your data to be part of this data sharing. So for that reason, I've set up a petition on change.org that can hopefully persuade those in power to change this to an opt-in rather than an opt-out. Only then I feel they can be sure that you want to be part of this scheme. As always, please see the links below for full details and seek formal advice if you want advice. Leave me your thoughts below and I'll see you next time.